Okay, welcome back everybody. So today we're going to be working on hypothesis test for a population proportion. I did want to show you that the, uh, the next podcast, next for next class, will be hypothesis test for a population mean. So these are your guided notes. Hopefully you've printed these out. Um, let's go ahead and dive right in. So again, for this podcast, we'll be working on testing for a population proportion. Uh, I introduced you to the five-step procedure in the last podcast. Uh, note that when observed results are unlikely under the assumption that the null hypothesis is true, we say that the result is statistically significant. And when results are found to be statistically significant, we reject the null hypothesis. This will all make a little more sense as we, as we move along. A page down here. So therefore, in order to use Z procedures, i.e. run a one-prop Z test that we're about to do, we recall things from the central limit theorem. Recall that the sampling distribution of P hat is approximately normal, uh, with mu sub P hat equaling to, the, to P, and sigma sub P hat equaling to this expression, the standard error of the distribution. Bear that in mind. Uh, provided the following requirements are satisfied, so provided that NPQ is greater than 10, and that you're dealing with a simple random sample, and that your sampled values are independent of one another. So you're not dealing with uh, mothers and daughters or twins or someone that's genetically linked with regard to the parameter of interest in your sample. Okay, let's keep paging down here. Here is the example that we want to work on today. And I show you how to do it by hand and on the calculator and possibly even Excel today. A one-prop Z test. In 1997, 46% of Americans said they did not trust the media when it comes to reporting the news fully, accurately, and fairly. In a 2000 poll of a little over 1,000, 1,010 adults nationwide, 525 said that they did not trust the media. At the 5% alpha level, is there evidence to support, which means really at the 95% confidence level, remember how those are related, is there evidence to support the claim that the percent of Americans that do not trust the media has increased since 1997? Well, let's just practice, you know, writing what I like to call the null, the, I call it the ho and the ha, the null and the research hypothesis. Some textbooks write that as H0 and H1. Okay, so we want to know, is there evidence to say that it has increased? Okay, so has the true proportion increased? I mean, is greater than 46%? And then I always like to, so I write my research hypothesis first, and then I always like to make my null be the um, opposite of my research hypothesis, or is P less than or equal to 46%? You could just make your null a statement of equality, too. P equals 46%. Either one is fine. Okay, so um, now that we've written that, bear that in mind. Page down. To test hypotheses regarding the population proportion, we can use the steps that follow, provided that, like I said, you have a simple random sample, NPQ is bigger than 10, and... The, the sampled values are independent of one another. So here we have our null and our research hypothesis. I had set that up earlier. The level of significance is a 0.05. Your sample proportion is 0.52. So in your, so in your five-step procedure, again, step one is, you know, state the ho and the ha. So P is greater than 46% or P equals 46%. Like I said, you could write plain old equals or less than or equal to. Um, either of those would suffice. Your test statistic is a p hat minus p naught over big square root p naught one minus p naught all over little n, and that's one big old square root. Now you can see that that is crunched out in here. Okay, I have that set up for you. So you're you're taking your um, Sample proportion, if it helps you, just write recipes for yourself. P hat is from your sample. P naught is your hypothesized proportion. 
So you're taking your 0.52 minus your 0.46 over big square root, and you, you see it right here. 0.46, 1 minus 0.46, all over n, which was 1,010. So anyhow, when you crunch out your z-score, you will get z equals 3.83. That is called your test statistic. Now it's going to make my writing go away as, as we uh, slide along here. So I'm going to make this one a little bigger. Okay, so um, the old-fashioned way of doing things is, you know, does your test statistic live far enough out in the tail on the z-curve to make you reject the null? So the curve is like centered as if the, the null was true, and if the null was true, then there is no, you know, then the difference, if the null is true, then your test statistic basically shouldn't live very far away from the null. If your test statistic lives way far out in the tail, that's evidence to say you should reject the null. So the question is, how far is far enough out in the tail? Well, 3.83 feels like it lives far out in the tail, but you have to compare that to something. So since it's a right-tailed test, we determine the critical value at 0.05 level of significance to be 1.645. So that's z sub 0.05 is 1.645. So by now in the course, I'm assuming that you know how to you know, use the z table backwards and figure out if there's 0.05 area in the upper tail, what's the corresponding z score. So 1.645 is your, what I call your CV, your critical value. And let me do this in another color. And your test statistic definitely lives, you know, further out in the tail. And you could even say it like this, lives in the rejection region. So the rejection region is the, any, is beyond 1.645. So you will reject the null. And that's taken what's called the classical approach. So since the test statistic 3.83 is greater than the critical value, we reject the null. Now let's just take a moment, though, to run that on the calculator. So we did everything the old-fashioned way. Let's take a moment to run that as a one-prop Z test on the calculator. So stat, slide over to test, slide down to one prop z test. Your hypothesized proportion was 0.46 for this problem. Your x was, I'd have to, I think it was 525 out of, let me go back there. Your X was, I believe it was 525, 525, and your N was the 1010, 1010. So it was like how many you observed out of 1010. You're running a right-tailed test, so again, whatever symbol you see in your research hypothesis is what you're highlighting. So you're highlighting a right-tailed greater than symbol. Hit calculate, and uh, let me make sure I have all the... It spits out a test statistic of 3.81, which is close. Let me just make sure I input all the information correctly, because I didn't, I didn't scan back to the paragraph. Yeah, 525, 525 out of 1010. 10. So I'm assuming this test statistic here of 3.83 is rounded a bit. So let's steal the test statistic and the p-value off of the calculator. I just noticed that that's not appearing on there. Okay, hopefully I got that fixed. I just noticed my calculator wasn't appearing there. All right, so we will steal the test statistic. That's why I always tell people, you know, once you convince yourself that, you know, doing it by hand and doing the calculator is going to give you the same thing, 3.8, calculator's given us 3.81, which could be, you know, a little round-off error there, because when 
we crunched it by hand, we got 3.83. Your p-value, though, is very small. Let's report that p-value if you're taking the p-value approach. Notice the scientific notation, 6.9 times 10 to the negative fifth. That's a very small p-value, right? That's point zero 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 seven about. So if you were taking the p-value approach, I wanted to mention that, you know, since p is less than alpha, reject the null. So you, no matter what, you still end up rejecting the null. Okay. So then let's show what that means in words. So you don't want, just want to say, I reject the null. So at the very end, you want to you know, throw back the context of the problem. So decision and interpretation. There is sufficient evidence at the 5% level of significance to conclude that the percent of Americans that do not trust the media has increased since 1997. See, that's big. You always want to throw it back and interpret the problem. Uh, I'm going to hit pause a moment and pull up Megastat. I think it's important um, to know how to do this on Excel, because most of the world uses Excel. Okay, so remember that um, Megastat is a free add-in for Excel, so you can go to Add-ins, Megastat. You can Google it if you're unsure how to, to get Megastat. Um, go down to Hypothesis Test. It makes all this hypothesis testing stuff really easy. Uh, proportion versus hypothesized value. We're just going to run that same one we just did. So you observe 525 out of 1,010 did not trust the media. Your hypothesized proportion is 0.46. You were running a right-tailed test. You can even display your confidence interval along with that and hit OK. Uh, what's nice about that is the um, Megastat, you can see here, it just reaffirms what we got on the calculator. It's getting the same test statistic. See, we can steal that test statistic, 3.81, steal that p-value, um, 0.0001. Now, if you, by the way, if you highlight over that p-value, I'm going to highlight in Excel, you can see that, you know, they've rounded it. So if I put my cursor over that and you see up in the window here, it's actually 0. 0.00007, which is exactly what the calculator gave us. It's this value here that I've highlighted in black. There we go. Now you see it. So what's really nice about the Excel and the calculator is, you know, they should support each other and support what you did by hand as well. So um, I hope that helps. And uh, just wanted to mention this is uh, the first part of the Smart Notes for one sample hypothesis testing. Uh, again, that was our test for a population proportion. Next podcast will be on the mean. Hope that helps. Good luck out there.